Hey friends, it's Angela. In today's episode, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make these sugar cookies that I make. Now, last week, um, I showed Barbara how to make them and she showed a little bit on her channel um, of us making the cookies together. But I thought I would share the recipe with you today and kind of take you through a little bit of how easy really it is to make them and they're so good. Now, so let me show you the recipe on my computer here and where to go get this recipe. So I am on texasmonthly.com and this is where I have got, I found the recipe. It is from December of 2000 and it's called Penny's Cookies. So if I scroll down, it kind of gives you an idea of what the cookies look like, right, when they're cut out. And here is the butter cookie dough recipe. So you might want to pause it on there, take a screenshot or whatever, and that way you'll have it. Now these cookies are really nice because they don't spread as much as some other ones when you bake them in the oven. So they're really good about holding their shape. Now they will spread a little but for the most part, you're gonna get a really consistent shape when you use this recipe, which I really like. The first thing this recipe tells us is that we need a cup of butter. So basically you need two sticks. I am going to be making a double recipe today because I have an order for tomorrow. Uh, somebody is ordering 14 cookies, but they're bigger and they're gonna be in the shape of a letter M and that's for their school. A lady contacted me and ordered these cookies for the cheerleader, so very exciting. So I'm using four sticks of butter to do a double recipe. Now, here's the thing about the butter. Butter can be tricky when you're baking. If this butter is melted too much when, before it goes in your mixer, you're gonna get cookies that actually spread more. It doesn't matter what the recipe is, they're gonna spread more. So you wanna soften this butter, but you don't wanna be able to really smush it and it's running all over the place, okay? But you don't want it right out of the refrigerator either. So I put all of these sticks of butter in my microwave and I let it go at about 10 seconds at a time. And then I reach in there and feel it. Is it squishable, but not too squishy? It's like there's just that right amount, I'm telling you. It just takes time and experience to figure out what that is, but you eventually will learn it by feel. So I'm gonna put these in the microwave, get them soft, and then I'm gonna add this right into Old Betsy here because this mixer, let me tell you this about this mixer. I got this KitchenAid mixer for my wedding shower. So we're talking like 26 years ago. <laughs> And when I first got this mixer, it was hilarious because I'm like looking at looking at it going, what am I ever gonna use that for? Because at that time I wasn't baking. I didn't like cook much, right? So I'm thinking, what am I gonna use this for? That's hardly gonna get used. Well, the first so many years that we were married, my husband would pull this out when he made mashed potatoes because it really whips them really well when you're making mashed potatoes and gets the lumps out. So that's what we used it for, primarily for like the first, I don't even know how many years, a while. Then when I started getting into baking 16 years ago, this, this mixer here started getting a workout big time. I mean, this thing is used all the time. I am wait, I'm not waiting for it to go, but like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's getting to the point where you're like, are we getting to the year that's gonna die on me or what? But this thing, I'm telling you what, it has, it has been with me and seeing so many cakes and so much frosting made, I'm telling you what. So, love this mixer. KitchenAid is, is I just love it. I love my KitchenAid. Okay, on to the butter. Let me get this in the microwave. So in my microwave, pulling this butter right out of the refrigerator, I only put these sticks in there for 15 seconds total. All of them at one time, 15 seconds total. So now we're gonna put this in the mixer and then we're gonna add our sugar to it. And I will show you how long to mix it for before you know when to add the next ingredients in. So sugar is going in. You're gonna need one cup if you're making one recipe. But remember, I'm making two recipes today, so I'm putting in two cups. That's what you're gonna see me do. So granulated sugar. You wanna get it as pretty even on the top as you can. I 
I use this paddle. Um, I know the mixer comes with like a whisk too, but I use this when I'm making the cookies and actually I use it when I'm making my frosting too. This paddle gets a big time of use as well. Okay, so now let me bring you down so that you guys can see this mixing and what it's gonna look like, like when it's time to add the next ingredients in. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna start out slow because did you see that? If, you, if you're too quick, that sugar is gonna just fly all over the place. So I'm gonna kind of pump the brakes here. Pump the gas. So you're gonna see it, it looks kinda chunky right now, but we want it really smooth like a paste. So I'm gonna let that keep going. I'll come back on when we get the right consistency. Okay, so let's stop this for a second. We'll just get the sides scraped down a bit. And then we'll keep going a little bit more. Okay, do you guys see how it looks like a creamy paste on the sides? That's when you know you're ready to add in the next ingredients. Okay, so the next thing that's going in is our eggs. So I'm, I will be using two since I'm doubling today. Okay, we'll let that mix in there for a minute. Then I'm gonna be adding in two tablespoons of vanilla. Actually, I'm doing four though, since I'm doubling. So this is a two tablespoon measuring little spoon here, I guess. So I'm gonna do a little bit at a time so it doesn't spray out on me. All right, so there's one and one more. It does look like you're putting a lot of vanilla in there. What I know when I first started making it, I thought, man, that's a lot of vanilla. And a vanilla can be expensive, but that's what it calls for. And this will make, I'm hoping it makes between 16 and 20 big thick cookies with my two recipes. The next thing we're putting in is some heavy whipping cream. So two tablespoons of this per batch. So again, I'll be doing four. So this is two here. Same thing, just kind of slowly add it in. And then I'll do one more because I'm making a double. Okay, I am going to scrape down the sides again and then let it mix a bit more so it all gets really incorporated. And then it will be time to add add in our dry ingredients. Here, so here's what it looks like before we're gonna add the dry ingredients, which is flour and baking powder. Okay, so I have clean hands. <laughs> I have, uh, each recipe you're gonna have three cups of flour. So for me, I'm gonna do six cups today. So I have three in here already. And I, I use, um, just make sure that's level, so it's four. I use an unbleached flour. It's a white all-purpose flour, but it's unbleached because I don't like all that extra chemical stuff in my flour. Okay, so now I am not gonna put this flour away. I'm gonna put it over by my cutting board because we're gonna need flour to kind of spread on the cutting board to roll out the dough. And then we've got some baking powder and we are gonna use a teaspoon and a half per batch. So I'm using three teaspoons today. Okay, I'm gonna stir this up to incorporate it. Kind of mix it in there a little bit. So now let's add this to our mixer. Okay, so we're gonna spread some flour on the cutting board here so the cookies don't stick. And then we're gonna take our dough, see how it actually got to a really nice consistency. 
All right, we're gonna take a big amount and we're gonna fold it into that flour and grab some of the flour on the board so that the outside of the dough is not so sticky. But we have to add a little bit more flour onto the board just to kind of make up for that. So we're still not gonna get sticking. Or on the rolling pin, same thing. Make sure you have flour on your rolling pin. And then gently, you're gonna just roll back and forth here. I like my cookies really thick, so we're not gonna we're not gonna spread these out too much. And one trick that I do is I kind of take the top of my hand and kind of go over the top of the dough so I can kind of feel if there's any higher spots than others where I need to roll maybe a little bit more. Okay, I think that's about good. So we're gonna take my cutter. Here's my M cookie cutter. And we're gonna start kind of as close to the edge as you can. And I'm gonna put that off to the side until they're all ready to go onto the pan. And then we'll gather our leftover flour and do that again. Here's my first batch of cookies going in the oven. Five on that tray and five on that tray. And we will have probably just enough to do four or five more. But look at how thick these are. I mean, when you look at them from that angle, they're thick. And any kind of imperfection or whatever, like here, on top of the cookie, it's okay because we're gonna cover these with fondant, like the cracks here or whatever. You won't, ever, you won't ever see that. So let's get these in the oven and I set the oven. Oven set at 325 and they'll go in for probably about 20, 25 minutes. So here's the first pan out of the oven and you know, you don't see a lot of brown, right? It's just a very light colored cookie. So I'm gonna let them sit for a minute and then I'm gonna take my little spatula and transfer them to the cooling rack. And there they will stay until they cool down enough to bag them until I'm ready to work, uh, to put the fondant on top. All right, so this morning we are making some royal icing to go on top of the cookies and I'll show you what the cookies look like in a second. So in the mixer I have two cups of powdered sugar sifted, and I have a tablespoon and a half of meringue powder, and then I have some warm water here that in my tablespoon. It says about three tablespoons of water, but I kinda, that's kinda tricky because you want a really good consistency for it to flow out of your piping bag and not be too stiff. So we're gonna have to figure that out. So I'm using this morning the whisk um, attachment for the KitchenAid. This does much better when you do this kind of frosting. So let's put that on there. Now first I'm going to just mix the powder together first, the royal icing, the meringue powder a little bit more and then start adding in one tablespoon of water at a time. So just on low. Otherwise you have a crazy mess in your kitchen. Okay, so one tablespoon of the warmer water going in do that and then I just let it mix for a second doesn't do much of a difference with the first scoop okay that made a tiny difference as you can see like in the very bottom of the bowl so let's do one more you're gonna see it kind of crumble a bit more now we're gonna get a little bit more liquidy I always kind of do this to the side of the bowl because it kind of lets that powdered sugar fall down in to the bottom of the bowl. It looks pretty thick. 
thick in there. Do you guys see that? It looks pretty gooey, like a dough. So let's do another scoop of water. So that'll be our third tablespoon of water going in. If you make a mistake and you put in too much water and it becomes too watery, then you can always add in a little bit more powdered sugar to stiffen it up. Okay, now I'm gonna increase my speed to about medium, and which on mine would be between like four and six. And I'm gonna let it go for maybe around five minutes or so. And I will come back to show you exactly what it looks like when you know it's done. Okay, I'm coming back on real quick just to show you um, what we're at, where we're at at this point. So do you see how you, it looks glossy? You can see that kind of at the, at the bottom a little bit. You do not want that, that is not done. We're looking for fluffy, dull, and of course white. Okay, so here's what we want. It is fluffy, and when you lift this out, this beater out, it forms peaks. Do you see the peaks on the end there? It will form a peak. Same in the bowl, peak, peak. <laughs> That's how you know it's at the right consistency. Now the next thing we're gonna do is see how easy this is to pipe. If it isn't, if it does, if it's not coming out that well, then I'm gonna have to put more water in here and beat it some more. Two tips. These are here's the cookies all ready to go with the for the royal icing. Now I have two tips for you. When you get done with your mixer, immediately rinse this off because it will harden on there, the extra royal icing, it'll harden like a rock. So you don't wanna be cleaning that off later when it's hard. The other thing is, whatever royal icing you're not using immediately, take some damp paper towel and cover the bowl. And actually, when you're not using this tip, it also should be covered with some damp paper towel because this stuff will tend to harden quickly. So by covering this, it will keep that moist uh, in the tip. All right, apparently I thought I was recording and showing you guys how to do this, so it wasn't. So I'm gonna move this down. Now you can see how I'm gonna do the second row and I'll explain that again. All right, so when I do these cookies, I always have some kind of hand on my flat surface and then on the bag, because if I am trying to do these cookies freehand, it's gonna be jiggly, okay? So I'm gonna start up here, and you're gonna always notice that I have some kind of hand on the lower uh, pan or whatever, and then I have a finger or something helping to keep my hand stable as I go. It makes for a, a like a straighter line that way. Not always perfect, but you know. So we're just gonna outline these in white. I also have a tendency to hold my breath. When I'm piping, I'm like, oh, so that I don't move, right? Okay, so now we're gonna put these pom-poms in the corner. Super easy. All I'm gonna do is make an X. Then I'm gonna go the other way, fill that in. Okay, look at how easy that is. Simple, simple. Okay, I'm gonna finish all these cookies. I have 16 cookies to do. So here's all, here's that tray. Or I have 14 cookies to do actually. So there they are. Well, here we are, October 23rd, and it is our last day out on the boat. It is being taken out and put into storage. <laughs> it feels so sad in a way, you know? We had a beautiful summer and it was a lot of fun, but this to me indicates winter is coming and I do not like. We're getting one last glimpse of all the trees around the lake. And if I see anything really good, I'll, I'll take a little snap of it for you guys. But uh, we're out here in the middle of the day. It is like 1130 in the morning. No one really out here because everybody's at work or maybe school, doing school at home, who knows. And uh, we're just enjoying it out here. It's really nice.
Anybody need a cooler before the uh, season ends? Right there. I can go dig it out for you. Last chance. next year. <laughs> we'll be back with more boating adventures next year. All right, since this vlog was a little bit short this week, um, and I feel like it was like more instruction, instruction, and then we went boating, I feel like the fun was missing. The fun was missing from the vlog. So I thought, I'm gonna include a short, a couple of short little stories for you. And that would be my little way of kicking this video up a notch. So the first thing I was gonna share with you guys, do you remember the pumpkins that my daughter and I got at the pumpkin patch? Let me show you this picture. Okay, yeah, that was a cute pumpkin, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I had it right on my fireplace mantle. It looked really good. And I'm thinking that should last for a while, right? So we've had it for two weeks. I'm on the floor over here doing my exercises Friday morning. And I'm kind of looking at that pumpkin. I'm like, gosh, does it look like it has a couple black spots maybe starting? Maybe it's like rotting from the inside out. And it was garbage day. And my husband loves to get rid of anything that needs to go in the garbage. He's like looking around the house. Does this need to be thrown out? Can we get rid of this? It's like he, I think he should have been associated, had some, his job should have had something to do with being a trash collector, honestly. He, every time, the trash man comes. He gets up on this, let me show you. He gets up on this little walkway here, okay? And looks at the truck coming down the street and then waits to see the garbage can get dumped in the back of that truck. I mean, like every week. <laughs> he loves it. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So. I'm like, you know what? I think maybe you could get rid of that pumpkin. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but maybe we should throw it out because the truck hadn't come yet. So, okay, he goes over to pick it up and he's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, what? And he picks it, he goes, did you not put it on anything? I'm like, yeah, I put something under there. I think it was paper or something. Cause I thought if the pumpkin like started to get soft or something like that, it wouldn't wreck our stone. Okay, on the fireplace mantle. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it left a huge stain or something. So I look, he's holding it, he's holding the pumpkin over the wood floor and it is dripping like, okay, like when your water breaks, yeah. And the and it's just dripping water from the bottom of the pumpkin. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I run to the kitchen and get a trash bag and bring it over so he can put that pumpkin in. Let me tell you what, the juice, that came out of that pumpkin, okay, until I could get the bag over there and he could put it in. It was so rancid. I don't, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, and I've thought about it before. What can I remember being as rancid as the smell of that? It was horrible, horrible. Then I'm, I'm cleaning up the wood floor. I'm like getting soap and water, washing it up. The smell was like, it was still like a faint smell. I'm like going, oh my God, this is not good. So then I go get Bentley's little odor remover in case he like, you know, ever has an accident, we can take and put that on the carpet or whatever, a floor, if he throws up, whatever. And it gets rid of the odor. So I'm spraying the floor down over there. Like, let's get rid of this because it's nasty. And it finally got, I finally got the smell out, but I'm telling you what, if you have any inkling that your pumpkin might be going bad before Halloween, you need to give it the pitch quickly because if we would have waited another week, oh my God, it, it would have been horrible. It would have been horrible and it probably could have stained that stone. 
Anyway, we were happy to get rid of that sucker and we were happy to catch it when we did because it would have been horrible to wait another day or week until we really got up in there because you couldn't smell anything from like where I do my exercises. You couldn't smell anything at all. It was, you know, no big deal. But as soon as that water come, started coming out, it was like, oh man, it's bad. It was bad. So word to the wise, don't leave your big pumpkins in the house for too long without checking them. All right, so then I have uh, one picture. I took a picture of this tree. It's over by our mall and it is such a beautiful tree. I was, I think I was driving, or no, my, Mark was driving and we were leaving the mall and I'm like, oh, I gotta get a picture of that tree. I'm like whipping out my phone real quick. Got a picture of this tree, you gotta see it. It is like, I mean, there's a lot of beautiful trees out there, but this was like, oh, I just love it. And I, I think, I don't remember if I've told you guys this before, but when my kids were little, and every year fall came around and the trees were changing. I always told them, I said, you know, this is like the fireworks. This is like the fireworks of fall when all these trees start changing and all the colors are just beautiful. I'm like, it just reminds me of God's fireworks, God's natural fireworks. And I just, I just love it. I love the colors. I wish they would stay for a lot longer than they do but I'll take it. I'll take a couple weeks of the beautiful colors and that's all good. It'll be burned in my memory till next year. But anyway, so that's what I always would call, I'll call it to my kids. It was always a fall fireworks. So on that note, that's what I have for you this week. I know it's kind of short, but um, that's what I have to share with you guys next week. So you never know what this week's gonna bring in this house. Um, we'll just have to see. So I hope you guys are having a great end of your weekend or week, beginning of your week, whenever you watch this. And I will see you soon. Bye.